Hello, this is Sean. I've just come out of uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I saw it with uh, J-Man, uh, Owen from Action Elite, uh, Steve. Um, I I, uh, I don't know where to begin with this. So uh, this is the Thursday night um, viewing uh, before the Friday you know, official opening. They usually uh, open these movies the Thursday night before the Friday. That's the official, official opening. We usually go out to see these movies on the Thursday night opening night. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's usually packed. Uh, we went to an IMAX uh, screening of Dial of Destiny. And I counted there were 30 people in the theater uh, for the IMAX showing. Uh, the, the concession stand was mostly empty. Hey guys, I don't really do this often, but I wanted to show something. So I'm at the opening of uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. And this is the opening night. This is actually the Thursday before the Friday. And usually this is packed up with people trying to watch the movie first before anyone else. Um, every other time we've done this, uh, come on a Thursday night before the Friday, uh, basically it's been packed. However, and this is similar to what other people have been saying. There's no one here. We just kind of there's no one. There's like four or so people over there in the middle. I can't get this to focus, but oh, there you go. There's no one here, man. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. No one's buying tickets. Alright, we're at trailers now, and the movie's about to begin, and this is the theater for Dial of Destiny. Time day is coming July 11th Hardly and 12th, with here. two days of epic deals exclusively. Um, it's kind of sad to see. Actually, it's not kind of sad to see, it is sad to see. Um, the movie itself, I, I, I debated whether or not I should do an out of uh, theater reaction to it. Um, it's, I don't know what everyone else is watching and those who are like, oh, it's okay. No. It's, it's a bad movie. It's way overly long. Um, it's lifeless. Um, no energy to it. It's boring. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like it was a lot like a, a lesser version of National Treasure. It, there's a lot of just walking around and stuff and, and, and the um, action scenes, uh, whenever they, they occur, are mostly chase sequences and the chases are without any sort of um, like imagination or uh, gags or fun, cool things that happen like, you know, like an Indiana Jones movie. I mean, you know, when you watch something like uh, Temple of Doom or Raiders Lost Ark and stuff, there, there's cool stuff in, in that truck chase, for example, where he's like hanging on with his whip and he climbs up and stuff like that, or um, with a tank scene in, in Last Crusade, or um, the dungeon crawling stuff in, in um, Temple of Doom where uh, Short Round and, and Indiana Jones are, are, are in a trap and like, you know, Willie Scott has to has to get them out But she, she's thwarted by um by a bunch of uh, insects a lot of that stuff is memorable because there, there are fun things happening in them um, Lots of imagination and stuff going on there of cool things that can happen in those situations That doesn't happen here uh, Indiana Jones is, is being chased in a, a parade and they don't use anything in the parade uh, that's fun and whimsical. Um, you know, uh, th there's car chases and it's just a car chase. Um, there are no real stakes. Uh, you know, the, the thing that they're trying to get, the Dial of Destiny itself. Um, you know, uh, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character, Helena um, Shaw, I think her name is, um, just wants to sell it and get rich or whatever. Indiana Jones has no real stake himself. Um, so... What's the point of anything I'm watching? Uh, you know, the, the, the villain's okay, but like the, the what the villain wants and, and what, what the uh, Donald Destiny is, uh, don't jive. Um, this is a, yet another movie since uh, Last Crusade and Crystal Skull that also tries to chase the Raiders' formula rather than make a new thing like what uh, Temple of Doom did. 
And in in so chasing Raiders of the Lost Ark, they basically um, um, create the mistakes that people accuse Raiders of the Lost Ark of. You, you know the, 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 the drill. People think that Raiders of the Lost Ark is a movie that if Indiana Jones um, wasn't involved, then the Nazis would all die and everything would be great. The thing is that um, Indiana Jones uh, learning faith and stuff at the end and, and trusting in uh, so-called um, um, supernatural, but in this case religious um, uh, goings-on around him rather than the cold hard facts um, and, and surviving uh, the, the, the attack on the Nazis and being able to retrieve this very dangerous thing is why he's there. So that makes sense in Raiders. But in Last Crusade, I mean, you can't leave that cave without the uh, the um, the um, the cup of Christ. And in uh, Crystal Skull, the aliens just kill everyone and leave. Um, and, and here, it's a similar kind of thing. I, you know, like I could make the 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 case of uh, Indiana Jones wasn't around. I mean, you know, everything would just mop itself up, kind of thing. Um, but anyhow. Um, so the, the, the plotting is very slow <laughs> and this movie uh, didn't need to be two and a half hours long. Um, there's no imagination or, or glee or, or fun in, in, um, doing all this. I, I, I've said this before to my friends and, and I'll say it to you. I've never really liked James Mangold as a genre filmmaker. I always feel like he's, he's, um, embarrassed by genre. Uh, I know a lot of people love The Wolverine. I, I didn't like what they did with the original source material for that, um, which was the, the original uh, miniseries, um, the four-issue one. And um, and I, I really didn't like Logan. I'm the only one in the world. I, I know everyone loves Logan. I feel Logan is embarrassed by... I, I, I feel like the film itself is embarrassed by the superhero tropes. Um, embarrassed by all that and it just like strips all that down and it's not even Wolverine anymore and I get you might think that's the point but like then why am I watching this um, and this movie uh, shows that uh, James Mangold took no glee or pride or or um, or uh, fun in creating this it's just it's tired it feels tired uh, it feels like a chore. It feels like I gotta make an Indian Jones thing. I guess they get chased and all that stuff. It's it's whatever. Um, I'm I'm really deflated by this. This is really uh, an insult to the character. Um, you know, to send it off like this, like you can't make anymore. And and no one wanted this movie after Crystal Skull. We were resigned to the idea that. Um, Listen, you can't make any more Indiana Jones movies. He's older. That's not really what the character is. He should be a, an action man that goes on action adventures, you know? And, and the first two movies were that. And then they started weaving in, you know, um, personal life and everything. His reconciliation with his father in Last Crusade. And, like, you know, reconciliation with uh, with um, Karen Allen, you know, uh, in, 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 um, in Crystal Skull. Um, and, uh, and all that stuff, and, and, and here it's like, you know, uh, he's getting older, and, you know, and, like, reconcil reconciling that, it's like, that's not really what the character is, um, and, and this one is really lifeless, it's really a slog to get through, it's good to watch once, but it's, it's not, it's not the fun and wonder of Indiana Jones, it's not the fun and wonder of movie going. So it's it's tough to recommend this one. Um, watch if you're curious once. Um, doze off uh, a couple times through it. And and, and, um, and probably never watch it again. That's that's probably my um, take. I, I might watch this out of curiosity 15 years from now and say, is it that bad? And, and realize that, yes, it's a long, boring mess. Um, so, yeah, this is easily the worst of the series. It, it easily it, it's a uh, crystal skull at least has cool indiana jones things from time to time i mean some of the dungeon crawling in there um lacks any sort of cool gags and stuff but it's still fun uh this my gosh and like phoebe waller bridge i guess i should talk about that everyone is carrying on about like oh she's insufferable um she maybe because i i i steeled myself up for that she's not that bad um however 
Uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is, is not um, an appealing um, persona on screen. She just isn't. Uh, and, you know, a, a lot of um, her line reads could have probably been done better by other actresses out there um, and still appear uh, inviting and um, and and um, something that the audience can get behind. Here, she just feels like she's condescending constantly, um, not just to the characters around her, but to the audience itself. Um, just, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what Hollywood's love affair with Phoebe Waller-Bridge is. I, I don't get it. It's like, please make it stop. Um, what else? There's this kid that's her, her sidekick who's super annoying. Uh, he's no um, short round. Uh, what else? That's about it. You, you see John Reese davies That's cool. Um, Antonio Banderas is uh, very warm and charming uh, when you see him briefly in this film, but he's uh, ultimately wasted. Um, the score is cool, as always. Uh, you know, John Williams is really trying with this one. He tries to work in the Indiana Jones theme uh, whenever he can. Uh, but yeah, this is... Uh, th this, this is... Once again, I'll use the word lifeless. It's lifeless. Um, there's no energy to it. There's no glee and wonder to it. It looks like the people behind the scenes felt it was a chore. And you get that in, 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 in what you see. It feels like a chore. It feels like a slog. It feels like a shoulder-shrugging obligation. That's what this movie feels like. Um... It's a, a black eye on the franchise. It's the last of the franchise. We'll always have the other um, movies and the comics. I'm, I'm rereading Further Adventures of Indiana Jones, which is the, the Marvel comic from the 80s. Um, uh, the Dark Horse comics, the novels that they still haven't reissued, um, etc., etc. Uh, so there you have it. My out-of-theater reaction for... Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, who boy, um, you know, uh, I hope you enjoy it if you decide to watch it, but, like, be warned, uh, it's, it's, I think it's fairly boring, uh, anyways, till next time, take care.